Somehow, some way, a bad score on Rotten Tomatoes can be the kiss of death for an entire movie's box office prospects. That's where we are now, entire film studios clutching their pearls over a review aggregation site while frothing at the mouth fanboys deliberately sabotage other movies to make their favourites look better. What a time to be alive! Still though, it takes a frankly Herculean effort to manage the fabled 0%. In short, you need not a single critic who watched the film to find it even passably entertaining. For f**k's sake, even Dirty Grandpa, comfortably the worst thing to ever happen to humanity, never mind cinema, got 11%. Still though, of the precious few that have attained this mantle, some are honestly not that bad. My name is Adam Cleary and these are the 10 best movies to score 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. But before we begin, why not subscribe to stay notified? Ding, ding, done. <laughs> Number 10. Police Academy 7 – Mission to Moscow Believe it or not, the seventh and final Police Academy movie to date was the fourth consecutive entry into the series to score 0% on the tomato meter. Nevertheless, though, it also represents the series at its most eccentric and aggressively off-the-wall best. This is a film, after all, which shifted the franchise's setting to Russia to make fun of just how indelicate and boorish Americans can be. No offence, lads. It co-starred Christopher Freakin Lee as a Russian Commandant and Ron Perlman as a Russian Mafia boss who, you know, launders money using an addictive video game. Plus, if nothing else, it was a film which introduced audiences to Claire Filani. Yet, somehow, not one critic found it worth the watch, but they are, I assure you, all wrong. Number 9. Killing Me Softly Imagine being so dry and unfulfilled you can find nothing enjoyable about a cheesy erotic thriller with Heather Graham and Joseph Fiennes. By any serious metric, the film is unconscionably ridiculous, yes, but it's really quite entertaining as a willfully trashy B-movie. Graham and Fiennes play up their roles perfectly and there's even a few bongo scenes for your dad to enjoy. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a sexy and exciting film that's not really either sexy or exciting, but so was Fifty Shades, and that took what? 571 million at the box office? Number 8. Leprechaun 4 In Space Christ, where to begin? I could get into how, despite being the third consecutive Leprechaun film to bomb critically, the infectious enthusiasm on display here more than redeems it, but I will just leave it at this. Warwick Davies' titular antagonist is killed early on in the movie, sorry about the spoilers, but after being urinated on by a marine, he swims up the guy's urethra, manifests as an STD, and later emerges out of his walloper. Plus, it's called Leprechaun 4 in space, what more do you want? Number 7. Mac and Me Not heard of it? Well, long story short, a semi-legendary late 80s E.T. knockoff that gained particular infamy in more recent years due to Paul Rudd. On its own terms, though, Mac and Me is one of the most unforgettably bad movies ever made, a stunningly transparent family film primarily intended to serve as an extended commercial for McDonald's. I mean, it even features a borderline experimental dance sequence set inside the restaurant. The Mac of the title is no coincidence, there's shameless shilling for Coca-Cola and Skittles, and the titular alien looks like what culture's Andy Murray if you left him out in the sun for a month. Number 6. Look Who's Talking Now how much time you have for the widely maligned third and final entry into the Look Who's Talking franchise will likely depend on your age. Thus, if you're currently around the 30 years old mark, hello everybody, there's a good chance you watched and enjoyed it. Shifting the voiceover gimmick from the children to the dogs, voiced incidentally by Danny DeVito and Diane Keaton, was, well, interesting. But it's the chemistry between Travolta and Kirstie Alley that actually makes it a good time. I mean, to be fair, if you hate talking dog movies, period, this'll do nothing for you, you joyless turd, but it's still perfectly acceptable holiday sludge if you're in the mood for it. Number 5. Jaws the Revenge I mean, yeah, alright, I did just do a video for us saying you should stop watching the Jaws franchise at the very first instalment, but that's not what this video's about, is it? Get off my dick. Ultimately, this is a film about a shark that's targeting a widow out of a sense of, you guessed it, actual revenge. Its commitment to such an outlandish premise so far removed from Spielberg's classic original should be lauded, albeit modestly. That said though, nothing in this movie is as awesome as Michael Caine, who is somehow in it, giving his appraisal. I have never seen it, but by all accounts, it is terrible. Number 4. Highlander 2 – The Quickening 
The original cut of Highlander 2 was widely lambasted as an horrendous follow-up to the 1986 fantasy cult classic. Roger Ebert famously called it both hilariously incomprehensible and almost awesome in its badness, which is, coincidentally, my Tinder bio. While any version of Highlander 2 has only the most scarce grasp on narrative logic and franchise continuity, the 2004 special edition, which includes a ton of extra footage, a more coherent plot, and nifty new effects, is a substantially better film. Well worth checking out for anybody who previously dismissed the original cut. Yep, that's it. No jokes, just a better film than it gets credit for. Number 3. Max Steel Based on Mattel's titular action figure line and from the pen of Thor Ragnarok writer Christopher Yost, Max Steel is probably best described as a harmless film. It's basically just an off-brand teenage Iron Man aimed squarely at young children and considering what director Stuart Hendler pulled off with a mere $10 million budget, its 0% score is harsher than your first cigarette. Is it generic? Sure. Is it a little dull at times? Perhaps, but it's surprisingly well produced and even stylish given the price tag. Plus, if nothing else, there's a goofy Power Rangers inspired tone which makes it a fine enough babysitting tool, if nothing else. Number 2. Deadfall if there's any movie on this list overdue a critical re-evaluation, it is surely this Nicolas Cage crime drama directed by his own brother Christopher Coppola. You've got Cage as a hopped up slimeball criminal, which is brilliant, who approaches his performance with all the subtlety of an exploding nuclear sex toy, which is obviously double brilliant with sprinkles. Look, maybe I'm not selling it very well, so just watch this brief montage taken from one of the millions available on the old YouTubes. Big shout out to my boy Eric Banner for actually trying to remake this. Number one, The Silence of the Hams. And finally, we have a movie that I'm not even going to try and pretend deserves more credit than it gets. Instead, this is worth a watch because, well, the same reason you'd slow down if you saw a mangled car on the other side of the road. To demonstrate the level of humor we're working with here, Billy Zane's protagonist is called Joe D. Foster. You get it because, yeah, yeah, you get it, right? Yeah, 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 because of her. It wished it was the naked gun even more than I wish I was Chris Hemsworth, but it doesn't even get nearly close. But there's little cameos from Mel Brooks, Joe Dante, John Carpenter, and John Landis, and I'm sorry, but it just has this brilliant, alluring weirdness that the subsequent super spoof scary movie types we've had post-millennium never managed to capture. It is a mangled, rabid, brain-dead puppy of a movie, but even then, that is still a puppy. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video, aren't you a star? Don't forget to subscribe below and also the people who made this video, they're right here, so go and follow them and give them some love. If you want to see more content, there's probably some stuff flowing up above my head, why not check it out? It could be fun. I'm not your dad.